Okay, welcome back. Um, we can use the same data set, the earthworm size or weight data set, to ask a different question. And that question is, do the size of earthworms differ among the three genera? It's quite a simple question, um, and uh, let's get to it. Where's our, here's our. So, first thing to do, as always, is have a look at the data. Let's just make a bit of space in here. Um, let's have a look at the data. So we'll do, as always, ggplot. The data's dd. And the aesthetic, now the x-axis of this, on the x-axis, the explanatory variable is going to be um, gattung, the genera. And on the y-axis, as before, log 10 of gewicht. And let's just do, as before, points. Log gewicht not found. I used capitals. Perfect. OK, so here we have um, quite um, a little bit different looking plot. Um, so we've got these three categories here on the x-axis, L, N, and O, C, and they're the three genera. Just looking at this, it looks like L is bigger in general, on average, than N and O, C, and there might not be much difference between those two. Maybe you'd prefer to have a box and whisker plot, um, in which case we could do geome, there it is, box plot. And if we put plus there and leave in geo and point, we get both. There we go. So we can do all sorts of plots very easily with, <coughs> with ggplot. Um, just to remind you, the first part of this ggplot here actually sets up um, the data set we're using, what's going on the x-axis and what's going on the y-axis. And then this part and this part say, how we want that to be represented, what geometry. So here it's represented, that data is represented as a box plot, and here it's just represented as the points. Good. So it looks like there will be, that there is a difference with L being larger than N and OC. So we've kind of got, got an answer. We can do a little bit more actually here. We can um, try and guess the the actual means of the size of each of these. So let's just write this down. We'll use a hash because we don't want R to run it. Let's say the mean for L, let's say that's somewhere around perhaps 0.4. Looks like it might be somewhere around here. This is the median, the, the bar here. So the mean is probably a little bit lower here. So 0.4, I'm just going to go guess that N is around, uh, it's a bit skewed this one still, so I'm going to go around point, well let's say point 0.2, at minus point 0.2 sorry, it's negative, so if it was about here that was about minus point 0.2, minus point 0.3, let's call it minus point 0.3, no there's the cat again, um, and OC equals, let's say that, let's say it's about the same, minus point uh, 0.3, Actually, that's not right. Uh, 0.4, it's going to be about, uh, just about here is about, that's 0.25, it is about 0.2. Okay, that means also that the difference, let's do, um, let's do N, what's the difference between N and L while we're at it? <coughs> Excuse me. That difference is about minus equals about minus 0 0.6 units. And the difference in L and O, C, we expect to be about the same. I'm doing this for a particular reason that will be apparent later. Good. So we've got the what we think will be the means of these three groups. And we've got uh, the difference between two of the means here and two of the means there. Good. Um, let's do. Uh, we mustn't forget to do degrees of freedom. Um, now, we can use the same method as before to do degrees of freedom here. Um, how many things did we just estimate? Well, we estimated three things. We estimated the mean of each of the categories. 
And that's what the linear model is going to have to estimate here. It's estimating three parameters, and those parameters are the means of each of those categories. So we expect to have 143 minus 3 degrees of freedom for error. That is 140 degrees of freedom for error. Good. Let's remember that. And now let's do the model. Uh, we used M1 before, so we'll use M2 linear model with... Let's not forget this time to do the log 10 of Gewicht. And this time, where we put, previously we put in um, the continuous variable, now we just put in our categorical variable, Gattung. And the data set that that's in, as usual. Well, no news is good news. It looks like it ran. Let's do the auto plot of M2 check see if the assumptions look like they're met okie dokie so now this this plot looks a bit a bit different we've got the fitted values and actually there's only three fitted values all of these are the same all of these have the same fitted value and this one has the same fitted value that fitted value is the mean so they're the three values of the means that have been fitted and um, the residuals. It uh, doesn't look like there's too much problem here. Um, there's relatively similar scatter of points in the vertical direction here, as here, as here. Uh, we have got a bit of an issue with the normal QQ plot. We might start to worry at this stage and, and try and do something about it. Just for the purposes of learning, I'm going to ignore that right now, but it is a little bit kind of worrying. So um, just for the purposes of learning, let's continue. So now we try and interpret the model. We can do that with the summary table as usual. Let's have a look at that summary table. As usual, we've got the model we fitted, something about the residuals. Uh, um, we've looked at that already in the, in the diagnostic plots. We've got about 33% of the variability explained um, a lot less then than weight, but still, but still some third of the variance explained. We've got 140 degrees of freedom, so perfect. We've fitted the model we expected to fit, and you can see that there are three things that have been estimated: the intercept, and then the gatum n and gatum oc. <clears throat> In that case, itself, where is l? Well, like Steffi explained. Um, this is the, this is L. So L is taken as the intercept or the reference mean because L comes alphabetically before N and OC. So R automatically uses the alphabetically first um, category as the reference. So we guessed, um, what did we guess? 0. 0.4, here we go. We guessed 0. 0.4 and it's actually 0. 0.33. Uh, not too bad for a very quick eyeball there. Um, now here we guess minus 0.2 and actually um, are saying point, minus 0.51 and minus 0.54. Let's just skip back to the here. Um, so it's, it's certainly not the case that the mean would be down here at minus 0.5 and minus 0.5. So there's something else going on here that's a bit odd. Um, <clears throat> and actually this parameter here that's estimated is actually the difference. What it's showing us is the difference between the reference L and the the reference um, L and and N. Actually, I've just noticed that this is wrong. This should be L, and this should be OC. Okay, so this one here, this parameter is this difference that we figured out. So in, in graphical terms, it's the distance between the mean here, the vertical distance between the mean here and the mean here. So it's that, it's that difference there that you can see there. And then this one, Gattung OC, is the difference between the reference and uh, OC. So it's kind of this distance here from this mean down to this mean. So, and, and the reason that R does it in this particular way is because th then what this 
this is testing is actually whether n is different from the intercept. And this is testing whether OC is different from the intercept or L. So it's testing whether kind of these have all the same means or whether the N mean differs from the L mean or the OC mean differs from the um, L mean. You can see actually um, both of these are about 0 0.5, 0 0.54. We guess about minus 0 0.6. Uh, these are negative. So, so our guess wasn't too far off actually. And they're both highly significant. So what that's saying is the difference between L and the other two is, is very significant. <clears throat> Uh, another another way of looking at this is actually by doing an over m two, and here, this is this is the an over table which you will become familiar with in, an, in in another lecture actually. But what this is saying is that Gatung, the genera, is a very significant explanatory variable. Okie dokie. So that is. Um, using a continuous, sorry, that is using a categorical, categorical explanatory variable in, in R, in a linear model. Um, like I said, you're going to, you're going to have a, have a go at this um, several times throughout the course. Um, but what's important is to understand um, that uh, this is the intercept, for, that's the mean for L, the reference and this is the difference between N and L, and this is the difference between OC and L. So interpreting this summary table here is a little challenging, um, but um, hopefully not too. Okie dokie, so that tells us that worms differ in weight. Um, it doesn't tell us anything about the relationship, whether the relationship between the size of this small gut part and it doesn't tell us whether anything between the size of this small gut part and the weight of the worm differs between genera. And that's what we're going to look at in the next uh, video of this series.